All right, thanks for watching. And today we would like to evaluate the following funky integral, namely the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the alternating series of 1 minus sine of x plus sine squared of x minus sine cubed of x, etc., etc. And by the way, if you want to see a related video, make sure to check out the one on my channel. Now, this thing, as I said, it's an alternating series, but it turns out it's a very famous one because this integral becomes just the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 1 plus minus sine of x plus minus sine of x squared plus minus sine of x cubed plus etc etc dx but notice 1 plus blah plus blah squared plus blah cubed etc etc that's just the geometric series so this just simplifies to the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 1 min over 1 minus minus sine of x dx now a one little but yet important detail, remember the geometric series is just valid when the stuff inside is between minus 1 and 1. But luckily, this minus sine of x under interval 0 to pi over 2 is precisely between minus 1 and 1. So in fact, this wishful expansion is actually valid. And so all we need to do is just evaluate the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 1 over 1 plus sine of x. So this becomes the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 1 over 1 plus sine of x dx. Now, the first time I tried to evaluate it, I have to share this with you. I was like, okay, so one second thing is just ln of absolute value of 1 plus sine of x, and then we would be done. But it turns out this is absolute nonsense, so I'm pretty embarrassed, but um, just to tell you that even doctors can make mistakes. Yet, but the cool thing is, the rest is still pretty neat. So how do we do this? Well, this 1 plus sine of x, let's try to multiply it by the conjugate form. So this becomes the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 1 over 1 plus sine of x. And let's see, some people wanted to see a, black, a red pen. So let's multiply this by 1 minus sine of x over 1 minus sine of x dx and then what do we get so this is the integral from 0 to pi over 2 so the numerator is 1 minus sine of x all right and then the denominator well let's see so 1 pl a plus b times a minus b that's a squared minus b squared so 1 squared minus sine squared of x dx. But look, 1 squared, that's just 1. And then here's what makes this so nice. So 1 minus sine squared of x, that's just cosine squared of x. Oh, it's pretty fascinating in my opinion because it's like a, a conjugate form for square roots, but in this case for trigonometry. So what are we left with? Well, So we get, if you want splitting up everything, you'll see why, integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 1 over cosine squared of x minus sine of x over cosine squared of x dx. Now, a 1 over cosine squared of x, in the US at least, is known as secant squared of x. So you'll see a very uh, famous, you know, antiderivative soon. So integral 0 to pi over 2 of secant squared of x and then minus sine of x over cosine squared of x dx. And then, um, well, integral of secant squared of x, that's just tangent of x. So, 
tangent of x. Now, uh, for this one, uh, if you want, you can just use a u substitution, u equals cosine of x. Or you can just kind of uh, guess and check if you'd like. So if you do, um, this looks a lot like plus 1 over cosine of x. But there's just a little issue here. Because if you differentiate this, sure, you get a minus sine of x over cosine squared. But then you also have to differentiate this cosine, which would give you a plus sign. So to remedy this, you just do minus, which is a very famous application of use the Chen Lu. And now you want to evaluate this from 0 to pi over 2. All right. Here's just one little issue. If you do that, you actually get infinity minus infinity. So we actually have to be a little bit careful. Now, at 0, there's not a big problem, because we get something 0 minus 1, that's minus 1. But at pi over 2, it's a problem. So it turns out it's not an improper integral, but more of an improper antiderivative. And so, because we're dealing with the interval from 0 to pi over 2, what we have to do, we have to take the limit of pi over 2 to the left. So, in other words, what does this become? This is the limit as x goes to pi over 2 minus of tangent of x minus 1 over cosine of x. And then, so just the stuff at 0, so minus tangent of 0, which is 0, minus 1 over cosine of 0, which is 1. So remember, whatever you find at the end, add 1. And then, let's see. So again, ideally, you know, it would be nice to just plug this in, but we have to be careful because it is infinity minus infinity. So what we need to do, we need to write tangent as sine over cosine. So this is the limit as x goes to pi over 2 minus of, I guess, sine of x minus 1 over cosine of x. But then, and again, remember this plus 1. <laughs> you know, when you bring a plus 1 to a party, uh, well, I don't, I don't bring people to parties if I get invited to parties. Okay, then, <laughs> anyway, assume you're cool and you bring a plus 1 to the party. It's the same thing here. Uh, plus 1. And then, um, so here we have a very typical case of 0 over 0. So what time it is? Well, it's L'Hopital's time. My watch is completely wrong. Um, so by L'Hopital's rule, you should find a name for L'Hopital's rule, like L'Hopitalu, I don't know. And this becomes the limit as x goes to pi over 2 minus of, well, cosine of x over minus sine of x. Okay. And again, remember your plus 1. But then the rest of this is not too bad, because you see cosine of pi over 2, that is 0. And then sine of pi over 2 is 1, so it's just 0 minus 1, which does become 0. So in the end, after all of hard work, we get 1. And black pen, red pen, I hope you were able to lift that. Ah, and all right. So if you like this and want to see more math, definitely make sure to subscribe to my channel and check it out. All right, thank you very much.